Good morning, everyone. So let's address this comment here. He says women outnumber men in schools and the workforce. Plus, we've been paying all the bills for years. What's the problem? <laughs> so this was a comment on the Tyler Perry video. And I just said, it's no problem. Just get your weight up. <laughs> But I wanted to address this honestly and sincerely because we have a crisis on our hands as a society. So he says, women outnumber men in schools and the workforce. What's the problem with that? The problem is that far too many men are not stepping up to meet the minimum societal standards by today's standards. It's like, who is stopping you from going to school? Who is stopping you from getting educated? Who is stopping you from going into the workforce and working? We know that this is a man's world, right? As, as they say. And we know that we're in a patriarchy where men are creating the rules and they have this brotherhood amongst each other. Women, especially black women, are at the bottom ends of both totem poles of race and gender. And yet women are able to go to school. They're able to, you know, Scott Galloway. Hold on. Let me see if I can find this video. The most violent, unstable societies in the world. Too many are broke and lonely young men. And we are producing too many of them. A lot of the jobs that young men used to have as on-ramps in the middle class were generally industries that over-index male, manufacturing, frontline work, those jobs have been outsourced overseas. In addition, once we level the playing field academically, women just blew by men. Women are more mm. mature, they're more disciplined, they're better at delaying gratification. And over the next five years, we're going to have two women graduate from college from every one man. So what we have is an entire cohort of what I call emotionally and economically unviable men. And so women are leveling up and it's great, but they're not interested in the men our society is producing right now. And the most violent, unstable societies in the world all have too many of the same thing. And that is a broke and lonely young man. And we are producing too many of them. You hear that, right? Why is it that we have men in charge? Why is it that we are considering them to be our leaders? All of the scholars say that men are just not that great at even governing themselves. So let's talk about that. He says that once the playing field was leveled and women could get into the workforce and into schools, they blew past the boys and the men. In other videos, he talks about how there's a push to get boys to start school one year later so that they could compete with the girls because age for age, boys just aren't able to keep up. So the guy asks, what's the problem? And I'm thinking to myself as a woman, this is no problem for me, but is it a problem for you? Are you able to do the things that you need to do and have the types of relationships you want to have? Are you able to get your DNA into this world in the ways that you're going about it? So one, men are the ones who have to vie for the female vessel to be able to carry his quote-unquote seed so that he can get his dna and his offspring into the world that's one number two i was trying to find a video but it seems like it's been deleted or moved or i just can't locate it we're a guy on a panel and he was positing as if he's a high value male right and he was talking about how it was a flex that his wife doesn't have to work, that she gets to stay home, that he works. And I had an epiphany when I was watching this video. That's part of the reason I was trying to find it. If any of you know where it is, please tag me in it or send it to me. That's not a flex. The real, see, part of the issue is that they are disregarding the amount of work that it takes to run a household from the inside.
They're trying to make it seem as if the wife doesn't work, but the real sentence is that the wife does not work outside the home because there's a lot of work that she needs to do in the home. The real flex is if she was really truly living a life of leisure because slaving away in the house, slaving away in the house, Doing the cooking, the cleaning, the rearing of the children, the the budgeting, the grocery shopping, the home economics, the organizing, um, what do you call these service people to come and do the things that need to be done in the house and all of the things that it takes to actually run a household. Goodness forbid if you if you are also holding down a, a job or a work from home job, because we know how it is nowadays. We know how it is. We're women. Uh, first of all, we have interests, there's hobbies, there's other things. And then also staying in shape and doing those sorts of things and planning out the healthy meals and doing the recipes and all of that other stuff, going to the gym and person. Look, the real flex would be if she was really truly living a life of leisure and you were paying for a nanny, housekeeper, chef, all of these things. But if she's doing all of that and then plus has, has her stay at home business as well. Number three. He says, we've been paying all the bills for years. Well, that's a misnomer in the black community. Who've been paying all the bills for years? Black women have always worked in this country, starting from way back in the, in the times of enslavement. And then from there, house housekeeping at other people's place. Because first of all, it was a, it was, or third of all, fourth or whatever. It was a crime in certain states for black women not to work because the white women who were used to the life of leisure could not deal without their helpers. And there's some Caucasian women or white women, European, whatever you want to call them, who will come to my videos and be upset that I'm speaking this. You must forget where it is that you are and who channel your pun. Anyway, let's go back. Number four goes back to point number two, right? We've been paying all of the bills for years. What's the problem? All right. In point number two, we talked about all of the things that it takes to run a house and how it's not that the woman is not working. It's that she is working inside of the home. Is he going to do that? Is he going to carry the home in such a way, right, that her input in the home is not needed or necessary? Is he going to be able to cook to such a level, clean to such a level, organize the, the household repairs, take care of the landscaping and the gardening or hire people to be able to do all of this? Is he going to be able to do that to... uh? above par level because we have this what is it called the incompetence what is it called uh let me think for a second weaponized incompetence where they do a thing so badly that you be like just forget it forget it forget it let, let me just take care of this right because we have seen the videos of the men who are like even though you work they're they're expecting you to do the cooking, cleaning, shopping, all of that stuff as well, right? And then not only that, if you get a chance, just Google any one of these. Women out earn husbands, but housework remains inequitable. A growing number of marriages are egalitarian, but women are still doing more. Even when women make as much as their husbands, they still do more at home. And this is from the Forbes article. Let's take a look. So when women are bringing in extra income, the men are not doing extra work. In fact, they're spending more time relaxing, 25.2 hours per week relaxing. And then the divide deepens when they have children under 18, where the women are doing 4.6 hours compared to the man's 1.9. And then look down here, it gets real sad that men are experiencing emotional stress as their wives begin to earn more than 40% of the household income. Why? Stay tuned for part two and leave your comments below.